in our last class we discuss the operation of buck boost converter and chuck converter the transfer function of buck boost converter is d divided by 1 minus d the ratio of output voltage magnitude of output voltage to the input dc voltage is d divided by 1 minus d another feature of buck boost converter is that the output voltage is negative with respect to the negative bus of the dc input okay it is negative output voltage is negative so therefore ideal buck boost converter the output voltage tends to infinity as d tends to 1 whereas a non ideal buck boost converter output voltage tends to zero similar to a boost converter because the assumptions that we made are not valid for high values of d okay for d less than or equal to 0.5 the magnitude of output voltage is less than or equal to the source voltage and for d greater than 0.5 the magnitude of output voltage is higher than the input so what is the relationship between the average source current and the average value of the load current i have derived this for buck as well as boost converter the same procedure you equate the input power to output power assuming the converter is lossless so average value of the input voltage is vdc so average value of the output voltage is d divided by 1 minus d so therefore the average value of the output current is the inverse of inverse of the ratio of the voltages it is 1 minus d divided by d so input power is equal to output power I just equate it So, if voltages are related by D divided by one minus D, currents are related by one minus D divided by D. Okay. So, what about the cook converter? Why why cook converter is so popular? Okay. Though the transfer function of cook converter is same as that of a buck boost converter, D divided by one minus D, current and voltage relationship is the same. But then why it is so popular why it became incentive popular okay so if you see the slide here this all we have discussed in the last class ratio is 1 at d is equal to 0.5 tends to infinity whereas non ideal buck boost reaches a peak okay is again it depends it depends on the function of the internal resistance of the inductor and the load resistance remember d max for buck boost is not the same as that of the boost okay but okay and it becomes zero at d is equal to 1 okay now coming to cook converter there is a capacitor connected in between the inductor and the output stage or oh, this is some sort of an intermediary voltage source a intermediary voltage source okay so when i close s current is or energy stored in the inductor vc1 is applied to the load because this point gets connected here so vc1 is applied to the load okay i said there is a inductor here and a voltage source so i can represent this combination by a current source okay so current varies smoothly unlike in buck and buck boost there are no sudden changes in the source current okay source current jumps uh, to a value which was flowing through the diode just prior to closing the switch and it becomes instantaneously zero when i open the switch both in buck as well as buck boost okay 
So that sort of a thing is absent in in the cook converter. Okay, openness, stored energy in the inductor is transferred to the capacitor. Okay. So we had represented this case, uh, this combination, in a buck converter by a current source. I told you there is an inductor; it's always present. It's always present. Cross always present in the circuit. So we can represent it by a current source. So I can say that capacitor C1 discharges discharges at a constant rate. Okay. Here I2 does change over a very small band. You know, depend. Okay. So I can assume that capacitor C1 discharges at a constant rate. Okay. Now when I open S, stored energy in the inductor is transferred to the capacitor Vc1, and I told you that I can represent this combination by a current source. So capacitor charges here at a constant rate. Okay, just the opposite. When I close the switch, the intermediary capacitor discharges, and when I open the switch, intermediary capacitor charges. Both at constant rates, but then the values of these two values, the load current and the source current, are different. Okay. So if you see the equivalent circuits, so this is nothing but a boost converter, where V C one can be represented by the load here. Okay. So the relationship between V D and V C one is is given by one divided by one minus d, or V C one is equal to V D C divided by one minus d. Okay. Whereas this is nothing but a buck converter with the input voltage or, or forcing function of V C one. The relationship between V C one and V zero is is proportional to d, or V C two or V naught is proportional to d into V C one. Now, how about the current relationship? A boost converter voltages are related by one divided by one minus d, so therefore currents are proportional to one minus d, inverse of that. So therefore, average value of the source current I S and the capacitor current. Assume that is the capacitor current I not. Is given by one minus d. Okay. But then the same capacitor current is 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 flowing through the load, or the average value of the capacitor current is nothing but average value of I two itself. Okay. So there is, we have a relationship between average value of the source current and average value of the load current for a buck converter. What is that? Average value of the source current is d times d times the average value of the load current. Okay. So I'll equate it here. So you'll get I S divided by one minus d into d. Okay. So this is nothing but a boost. You write a relationship between the currents, capacitor current and I S. This is nothing but a buck converter. There is a relationship between the source current and the load current, average values. Okay. Now substitute, and you will get the relationship between I S and I naught. So this direct. Okay. So. We have a current source at the input, and we have a current source at the output. Okay, both there is a current source. So how does the current? How does the various waveforms look like? We will draw it for the continuous current. Okay, because both I said input as well as output is a current source, so we can safely assume that assume that uh, current is continuous. How do they look like? Close S, source current 
increases linearly okay the same even i2 the current that is flowing through the inductor l2 also increases linearly because now capacitor vc1 is supplying power when i open the when i close the switch input stage or input inductor is being charged by the source voltage whereas at the load side the power is being supplied by the intermediary capacitor vc1 so there also i2 increases linearly okay so they look like something like this when i close yes current increases when i open yes current decreases linearly okay <coughs> similarly similarly at the at the load side when i close this this is the equivalent circuit vc1 supplies power current increases linearly and when i open s current free wheels through d so current decreases linearly okay by the way the diode has to carry i2 as well as is i2 as well as is if you see in this circuit see diode has to carry the current i2 as well as is is the circuit is is when the switch is open it flows like this and i2 flows like this okay so how does ic1 look like ic1 is or capacitor 1 is supplying power or i2 to the load so if this is i2 i say is this same the opposite direction capacitor is discharging at a constant rate or at a rate determined by i2 okay this is i2 capacitor current ic1 when i open s what happens to ic1 is same as the source current now is charging okay so this is the current that is that will flow through the capacitor c1 okay and i am assuming that the capacitor current or at the source current is continuous so when i open when i close the switch again ic1 instantaneously jumps to i2 it starts supplying i2 okay so this is ic1 how does ic2 look like so capacitor vc1 is discharging okay and it is charging here how does ic2 look like now i need to apply kcl at this point at this node as long as i2 is higher than i0 the difference in i2 minus i0 will flow through the capacitor if i2 is greater than i0 capac vc2 will charge and when ic2 is less than i0 capacitor will discharge okay so see so this is the variation of i2 this is the average load current so in this duration capacitor will discharge mind you capacitor current linearly changes and here also beyond this point capacitor is discharging in this region when i2 is higher than the average load current capacitor is charging okay so this is constantly increasing this is constant so therefore the capacitor current ic2 is also const linearly changing so this sort of a variation in a voltage waveform we have seen in the buck converter buck converter okay so therefore in a boost and a buck boost converter the output capacitor current is changes drastically in the sense 
the entire load current is being supplied by the output capacitor when the switch is closed, both in boost as well as buck boost converter. Whereas here, the capacitor current, even at the which is connected at the load side, gradually changes, gradually changes. Okay. Now, what is the voltage that is coming across the diode as well as the switch? Okay. So, when I close switch S, VC1 appears across the diode. If you see in the circuit, see when I close S, this point gets connected here or the entire VC1 appears across D or in other words, D should block VC1. Again, VC1 is a function of the duty cycle. It's related to VDC by 1 divided by 1 minus D. Okay? So, ma so, maximum value of VC1 that the diode should block. And what is the voltage that is coming across S? Okay. What happens when I open S? When I open S, diode starts conducting diode starts conducting. It carries both the load current or I2 as well as Is. So, this point gets connected here. Okay. So, voltage across the switch is also the capacitor voltage Vc1 okay. because this point and this point is the same. When the switch is open, diode starts conducting. So, this point gets connected here. So, voltage that is coming across S is Vc1 itself. So, this is a voltage across the diode Vc1 and this is voltage across the switch. Yeah, that is about the chuck converter. So, we have studied four DC to DC converters, buck boost, buck boost and chip converters. Now, let us solve few problems in this uh, DC to DC converters. Okay. The first problem is a buck converter feeding a DC machine. Okay. The problem says that R is 0, total inductance is 50 milli henrys, switching frequency is 500 hertz. D is 0.5, average current drawn by the motor is 10 amperes, I average. Assume that I L is continuous or assume that load current is continuous, assume that load current is continuous, determine the peak to peak ripple in the load current. Okay. We know that when I close this, yes, load current increases and when I open S, yes, load current decreases. So, what is the peak to peak voltage ripple? It is said that current is continuous. So, input voltage is given which is 200 volts, D is given, RA is 0. Okay. So, therefore, output voltage, average value of the output voltage that is coming across the armature terminals okay, is D into VDC. So, D is 0 0.5, VDC is 200 volts. Therefore, applied voltage to the armature is 100 volts. Okay. It is said that REA is 0, armature resistance is 0. Therefore, applied voltage to the armature is same as the induced EMF e, EB or the back EMF. Okay. Otherwise, it is EB plus IA RA. Okay. So, therefore, EB also equal to 100 volts. Now, how do I determine the peak to peak ripple in the load current? So, what happens when I close S? Yes. Current starts from I min increases linearly and it attains a 
maximum value i max so what is the voltage equation vdc is equal to l dr by dt plus eb resistance is zero and when i open s current flowing through the load it free wheels through the diode so kvl says that l dr by dt is minus eb from dt to t okay so it looks like this s on d on this is the armature current increases linearly reaches a peak comes down okay so this is the average value of the armature current 20 amperes okay so these are the two equations that we wrote okay so i di by dt i have put a suffix here that is increase and i put a decrease now using this equation subtract what do you get di by dt i minus l di by dt decrease is equal to 200 divided by l okay 200 divided by l from these two equations i will get this so therefore l di by dt is 100 L dia by dt is 100. How? See, it is very obvious here. 200 average value, Eb also is 100. So, remaining L dia by dt is 100. And minus L dia by dt is also 100. So, you substitute these values in this equation, you will get L dia by dt is 100 minus L dia by dt is also 100. So this is what we get here if I substitute. So di by dt is 2000 amperes per second. Value of L is known. Value of L is known. It is how much? It is 50 milli henrys. L is 50 milli henrys. Is it given? So I know this slope. I know the average value. I know the time for which the switch is closed so, okay so this point is dt by 2 okay this is linear this is 20 amperes i know the slope so i can calculate this as well as this okay so we solve you will get i min is equal to 19 amperes and i max is equal to 21 amperes okay so if i know the slope if i know the average value i can always determine i min and i max because i know all these values so they found to be 19 amperes and 21 amperes so armature current is varies between 19 and 21 okay 19 and 21 so if the armature current varies from 19 and 21 therefore torque also will pulsate torque also will pulsate in this region. So, in order to reduce the torque pulsation, I need to reduce this ripple, I mean difference between I min and I max. Okay. So, that will call for a higher switching frequency or the different value of L. Okay. So, we, de we did derive the expression for the current in the, uh, the, uh, the ripple in the inductor current. So, use that expression and if you want to minimize the ripple find out the new value of l for the same input and output conditions okay. a second very interesting problem so what it says nothing but a, a boost converter nothing but a boost converter 100 volts inductor of 100 micro henrys there is a switch I am connecting to ground okay, and through a diode is connected to a 300 volt source. Okay. So, how does this work? When I close S, yes, diode is reverse bias because this point gets connected here to ground 
cathode is connected to 300 volts okay so inductor charges at the constant rate l dia by dt is 100 volts openness the stored energy is being transferred to the source the essential condition for the boost converter to work is output voltage or v naught should be a higher than vdc so here v naught is 300 volts vdc is 100 volts problem says switching frequency is 20 kilohertz d is equal to 0.5 okay calculate the power transferred from 100 volt source to 300 volt source frequency is 20 kilohertz d is 0.5 power transferred from 100 volts to 300 volts assume that circuit has attained a steady state okay let's solve it is not mentioned that whether the current is continuous or not now you need to tell me whether the current will be continuous or not giving the circuit equation input is 100 output is 300 duty cycle is 0.5 in other words time for which energy is stored is same as time for which energy is allowed to transfer to to the load okay so when i close s the forcing function is 100 volts okay 100 volts is being applied to the inductor for some time okay current increases linearly and switch is open for the same duration d is equal to 0.5 but then now the voltage that is coming across the inductor is 200 volts 100 at the input or source voltage load voltage is 300 volts so when i close the switch voltage that is coming across the inductor is 100 volts when i open the switch voltage that is coming across it is 200 volts okay duration for which the switch is open is same as the duration for which the switch is closed therefore inductor current has to be discontinuous see for steady state voltage across the inductor average value should be zero okay I can have a positive voltage appearing across the inductor that means current is building up but then definitely I cannot have a situation wherein average voltage across the inductor being negative okay so in this case 100 volts is being applied for d into t across the indu across the inductor when the switch is closed plus 100 when the switch is opened voltage across the inductor is difference of two voltages 300 minus 100 that is 200 volts for 1 minus d duration so d is 0.5 so 200 into 0.5 cannot be equal to 100 into 0.5 what is the peak value of the inductor current peak value of inductor current is 100 is the voltage that is applied divided by l into time for which the switch is closed or 100 divided by l into d into t d into t or okay so d is 0.5 so you'll get 25 amperes okay so at at point 5t current is maximum so current when i open s current starts flowing through the 300 volt source and current falls linearly voltage that is appearing across the inductor is 200 volts it follows linearly so slope of this line is 200 divided by l okay and let beta be the instant where the current becomes zero okay 
I know the slope, I know the peak current, I know the peak current, I know the slope of this line, so I can calculate this point or T2. Okay. So definitely if this is 25, forcing function is 100, if this is 200, forcing function is 200, this should be half of this, 12.5 microseconds, 12.5 microseconds. Previous one was 25 microseconds, so this is 12.5 microseconds. Now what is the energy that is transferred to the 300 volt source? It is the area or is proportional to the area under this curve, this one, okay. The average value of the output voltage at 300 volts into average value of the current, this current or will give you, will give the output power. So what is the average value that is our energy transferred 300 into this half of I peak into T, it is the area of this triangle okay divided by the whole time period will give the average value of this current or the cycle is that okay the area of this triangle divided by the total time period t is the average value of the current that is flowing into the source flowing into the source so that's what i did 300 half into I peak into T2 divided by the total time period or multiplied by the frequency one and the same 20 kilohertz or divided by the time period 1 over T. So power that is received is 938 watts. Okay. We will solve another problem, a problem on buck boost okay the input source voltage is 100 volts output voltage is 500 volts value of l is 100 micro henrys okay switching frequency is 100 kilo hours the current is just continuous current is just continuous so what is t on and the peak value of the inductor current Okay. How do I solve? Current is just continuous. So it starts from 0, reaches a peak just prior to opening the switch. Okay. What is the voltage that is appearing across that inductor when the switch is closed? It is the source voltage itself. Okay. So in this case, source voltage is 100 volts okay current is just continuous current is just continuous so it becomes zero just prior to closing the switch in the next cycle okay but then the voltage that is appearing across the inductor when the switch is open is the output voltage is the output voltage Okay. So, in this circuit if you see close yes diode cannot conduct 100 volts appears across this inductor okay. open yes stored energy is transferred to this 500 volt source. Okay. So, voltage that is appearing across this is 500 volts okay. current is just continuous so it starts from 0 reaches a peak touches 0 just prior to closing the switch again. So I know the slope of this line, what is the slope of this line? V divided by L, V is 100 volts, L is 100 micro henrys. So peak value is D into T, so this value is D into T. Okay. I know the slope of this line, I know this peak value, okay. 
So equation for this line is same. 500 is the forcing function. 500 divided by L into T minus dt is the equation for this line. Okay. The slope of this is, is proportional to output voltage, 500 volts. Whereas this slope is the input voltage, VDC, 100 volts. Okay. So peak value is 500 divided by 10 the value of inductor into T minus dt. Now both are the same, both are the same. So I will equate it, I will equate it okay. and you find that dt or T on is 83.3 microseconds. Okay. So therefore the value of peak current is substitute here, you get as 83.3 amperes. 83.3 amperes. Okay. A uh, very simple problem. Again, a buck converter. Input is 60 volts. Output is 12 volts. Okay. Inductor that is connected is 20. Micro Henry's or milli Henry's, 20 milli Henry's is the inductor that is connected in series. Average current that is flowing is 5 amperes. The question is what is the peak to peak ripple flowing through the load? Okay. Switching frequency is 1 kilohertz, duty cycle is 0.2. So the problem, simple circuit, buck converter, 60 volts, batteries, 12 volts, 20 milli Henry is the inductor that is connected, 5 amperes is the current that is flowing, switch is controlled at or switched at 1 kilohertz with the D is equal to 0 0.2. Okay. What is the peak to peak ripple? Okay. It is a straight one line problem. I know the input, I know the output, I know the value of inductor, I know the time for which the switch is closed. One simple equation L dy by dt is equal to V in minus V out. Okay. So, whether the current is starts from 0 or starts from any finite value does not matter. It has to start from I min and just prior to opening the switch it has reached a peak in a buck converter. Okay. When I it starts from a minimum value it could be 0 does not matter it reaches a peak just prior to opening the switch. So the difference between I min to I max is, is peak to peak ripple and this depends only on the voltage that is appearing across the inductor, value of the inductor and time for which it is closed. Everything is known. Okay. L is known, time for which it is closed, dt is also known. So di is straightforward. 60 minus 12 is the voltage appearing across the inductor. So this is this. L is 20 milli Henry's okay, and D into T, D is 0 0.2 and this is T is 0.48 amperes. This is a peak to peak ripple. Okay. So we have solved quite a few problems. A last a very interesting problem in Chuck converter, very interesting problem in Chuck converter. Input voltage in the chip converter is 50 volts, output voltage V0 is 150 volts. Okay. Peak to peak ripple in the current flowing through L1 and L2 is 1 ampere. See, peak to peak ripple in the both the inductors is 1 ampere. So I can assume it as if like they are current sources. Okay and peak to peak ripple in 
the intermediary capacitor voltage is 10 volts okay or vc1 peak to peak ripple in vc1 is 10 volts and peak to peak ripple in output voltage that is vc2 is 1 volt see that's the reason i always said that output voltage in any converter can be assumed to be constant and ripple free okay it is always desirable or or it is expected that power supply maintains a constant voltage across the load so vc2 is peak to peak ripple in vc2 or v0 is 1 volt intermediate stage vc1 the ripple in vc1 is 10 volts the switch is switched at 25 kilohertz switching frequency is 25 kilohertz okay and we have been asked to neglect the internal resistance of l1 and l2 okay so we'll solve this problem the relationship between v0 and vdc is given by d divided by 1 minus d or v0 is equal to vdc into d divided by 1 minus d okay so we know the source voltage 50 volts output voltage 150 volts so therefore d is equal to 0.75 okay so switching frequency is 25 kilohertz d is 0.75 so we know the time for which s is closed and open okay so what are they the total time period is total time period is 40 microsecond t on is 30 microsecond because d is 0.75 and t off is 10 microsecond now how do i calculate vc1 and the ripples in the inductor uh, currents and the output voltage we know that average voltage across the inductor is zero at steady state okay so what is the voltage appearing across the inductor l1 because i have to calculate vc1 i can calculate vc1 only uh, from the input and the time for which the switch is closed okay so for that i need to equate i need to equate the average voltage across the inductor to, to zero or in other words i can straight away apply because i know the input voltage i know d i can calculate vc1 okay vc1 so voltage across the inductor when the switch is closed is vdc and when it is open it is vdc minus vc1 so i'll equate it it find to be 200 volts this also should be equal to this also should be equal to vdc divided by 1 minus d vc1 is nothing but vdc divided by 1 minus d is the nothing but a boost converter okay so this uh, vc uh, supply voltage is 50 volts d is 0.75 so 1 minus 0 0.75 0 0.25 so 50 divided by 0 0.25 is 200 volts how do i find out the average value of current that is flowing through the inductors what do i need to assume or what is the principle average current flowing through the capacitor at steady state should be zero okay vc1 or the capacitor c1 discharges at a constant rate okay current that is flowing out of the capacitor c1 when the switch is off is the average load current itself and capacitor charges at a constant rate 
and this current is proportional to the source current okay so capacitor discharges at a constant rate and that current is average value of this current is same as the load current okay and capacitor charges at a constant rate and this current is proportional to the source current okay so capacitor is being charged for 10 microseconds duration for which the switch is opened and capacitor c1 is being discharged for 30 microseconds of the duration for which the switch is closed so i will neglect the ripple in il1 as well as il2 okay i will neglect the ripple in il1 as well as il2 it is said that ripple in this current is 1 ampere okay, okay so i will neglect it so il2 is the current that is flowing in the inductor 2 l2 so il2 to into 30 microsecond for which the device is closed or this is the period the capacitor is discharging okay and 10 microsecond is the period for which the capacitor is charging at il1 okay it is mentioned that average load current is 10 amperes okay we know that average value of the capacitor current is zero so average value of the load current should be equal to average value of this inductor current i2 okay so il1 comes out to be 30 amperes il1 comes out to be 30 amperes okay what is next how do i determine l1 how do i determine l1 ripple is given ripple is given okay ripple is 1 ampere time for which the switch is closed is also given so what is the circuit equation circuit equation is ldi by dt is equal to vdc ldi by dt is equal to vdc so 50 volts is the input voltage l1 okay ripple in the l1 is 1 ampere or di is 1 ampere in 30 microseconds in 30 microseconds okay so 50 is the input voltage l1 is the inductor value uh, one is the ripple in the current 30 microsecond is the time for which device is closed so you'll get l1 to be 1.5 micro or 1.5 milli henries i do not know maybe micro milli find out it is this okay looks like yeah 1.5 milli henries similarly ripple in the inductor 2 it is 1 ampere and what is this ripple proportional to see when i when i see when i close the switch voltage that is appearing across l2 is vc1 minus vc2 okay so that is the voltage that is coming across the l2 i know vc1 which is 200 volts i know v naught 150 volts time for which this circuit is known or is same as the time for which the switch is closed so i can calculate the value of l2 okay vc1 minus v0 divided by l2 is the rate of change of current rate of increase in current di by dt okay switch is closed for 30 microsecond this is 1 ampere 1 ampere vc1 is 200 volts v0 is 150 so you can calculate l2 okay now what is the value of c1 and c2 how do i calculate c1 and c2 
Now, to determine C2, I need to know the time for which C2 is charging and C2 is discharging. Similar to buck converter, C2 charges when the inductor current I2 is less than the load current. Sorry, the capacitor C2 charges when the inductor current is higher than the load current, higher than the load current, higher than the load current, okay. So, so that can happen, uh, that happens from dt by 2 to 1 plus d divided by 2 into t, okay. We are assuming that current increases, see here current increases and decreases, I C 2 is charging in this period, okay. In during this period, I L 2 is higher than, higher than the load current. So, this is d t by 2, this is 1 plus d t by 2, okay. 1 plus d t by 2, okay. So, the charge that is lost is given by this 0.5 is the, say so this is peak to peak ripple is, peak to peak ripple is 1 ampere. So, this is definitely 0.5 amperes peak to peak ripple in both of them is 1 ampere. So, this is 0.5, okay. So, this is known, I need to find out the area. So, it is this. So, this is the charge, this is the charge, micro coulomb, micro coulomb, okay. So, C2 is given by 5 microfarads. So, delta V is known is 1 volt, 1 volt, 1 volt. The ripple in delta V naught is 1 volt. So, capacitor C2 is 5 microfarads, delta Q is. Similarly, C1 is discharged by an average current of 10 amperes. This is the average load current. Average value of I2 is same as the average value of the current that is flowing through C1, okay. That is capacitor is being, this current is being supplied by the capacitor, entire I0, okay. And this is the charging, okay. So, this is the discharge period. I know the current, I know the time for which this occurs. So, I can calculate, I can calculate the value of C. So, this is the charge. 10 ampere into 30 charge that is lost divided by the voltage. Ripple in the voltage is 10 volts. Ripple in the voltage is 10 volts. So, this is 30 micro farads, okay. So, so that is about it. A very interesting and very educative problem. We solved almost all the aspects in DC to DC conversion. First we find out the maximum and min minimum ripple in the load current, then a very good problem in cook converter, then a good problem in boost converter. It was a very educative problem. Since D was just mentioned, D is equal to 0.5, it was not mentioned that whether the current is continuous or not, we have to deduce, okay. So, more about it, we will see in the next class. Thank you.